What's up dudes and dudettes? Sorry I haven't been uploading in a while because I have been out of state for the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Yes, I finally get to go after like two years of wanting to go. I finally got to meet a lot of amazing people and getting a lot of cool amazing pickups. Well, I didn't get that much. I didn't get that much stuff today because I'm very concerned about how much I spend. But in the end, it was all good. I had an amazing time. Portland is a very, very beautiful city. I will definitely go next year. Finally got to meet certain people that I wanted to meet since, like, we follow each other on the internet or something. Let's just get straight to the point, and let's see what I picked up from Portland. And number one on the list is a Funko Pop figure. Now, I didn't get to do a pickups video on the last convention I went to, which is Anime Fest in Dallas. I didn't go to Retropalooza this year, but I did go to Anime Fest before that. And I picked up a couple of Funko figures, which are, oh yeah, which are Red Ranger from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Vegeta from the Freeze Resurrection of F Dragon Ball Z movie that came out like a couple years ago. The GameStop exclusive. I picked up another Funko Pop figure because, uh, why not? I enjoy Tekken so much that I got the Kazuya Funko Pop figure which I got for like $6. Usually these things go for, this one goes for like $14, I think. But I got this one for like 5 or 6 I don't remember. But hey, Kazuya is one of my favorite characters from Tekken. And people say my fighting style is similar to Kazuya. So yeah, Funko Pop figure. Finally got one. Another one added to the bunch. Let's go head off ourselves with some literature. And, you know, I love books. I love reading. But these are certain books that two of them I really needed and two of them are just for, like, leisure, for, like, recreational fun. This one is a official Nintendo Power Player's Guide. And this is for top secret password for your Nintendo games. And it has, like, uh, the NES games listed are TMNT 2 and 3, Ninja Turtles 2 and 3, Battletoads, uh, Ghosts and Goblins, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and Vice Project Doom. For Super Nintendo, has Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Super Smash TV, Super R-Type, Super Adventure Island, and The Rocketeer. I do not have The Rocketeer. I wish I did. I love the movie, though. Game Boy, Operation C, The Hunt for Red October, Adventure Island, and Snow Brothers Jr. Oh, wait. There's a... Oh, yeah, there's more games. Of course. That passwords for the Mega Man, Mega Man 2, 3, and 4, Metroid, Gargoyles Quest 2. I wish I still had that game, but I gave it to Alpha Omega Sin. But I've beaten it already, so I already, why would I need it again? If I ever find it again for cheap, then okay. Tecmo Bowl, Castlevania 2 and 3, Batman Return of the Joker. The list goes on and on. I mean, there's more to this, but I really wanted to get like secret codes and passwords and all that. There's also the, um, game genie that i have so this is a good addition so i really enjoyed having this so i'm really proud of having this into my nintendo power collection which i still have stacked up in my bookcase up there this was a magazine issue that they were giving out for free it's called uh old school gamer magazine now i have not opened this yet so i don't know any idea about this but i will check this out i will open this soon and i will have a look at it and talk about it Maybe do a separate video on this. I don't know. What do you guys think? And these are the two necessary books that I really need to have. You know, remember the last time on Christmas, a friend of mine sent me the player's handbook and the starter set for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Now I have the other two core rule books, which is the Dungeon Master's Guide for 5th edition. And I also have the Monster Manual for 5th edition. Now I can finally make my own adventures and start running more my custom campaigns because back then as a kid, I used to run like a couple of campaigns, several campaigns actually for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 2nd edition under the Forgotten Realms, Ravenloft and um my first one was actually Forgotten Realms. It's a Forgotten Realms campaign called Mestica, which has like all these um Aztec, uh, Mayan, kind of Spanish, Conquistador, Mexico kind of theme going on. And I also have the, um, I had a couple of the Dragonlance ones, but I can't remember which ones. 
I'm going to have to look for those if I ever find those out in the wild. But hey, now I can start running my own campaigns now, and all I have to do is get some friends together and start having adventures and all that kind of stuff. So, good for me. I finally, I'm all set. I finally got to meet a fellow YouTuber and fellow DFW native, David Murray, a.k.a. 8-Bit Guy. You know, it was actually really cool talking to him about vintage computing and all this sort of stuff like floppy disks. And I enjoyed because I had a Apple II and a Commodore 64 as a kid. I mentioned in previous videos on this channel. You know, the funny thing is, here's the thing about conventions that, um, sorry. Here's the thing about conventions that is kind of a downer, but it can help. It's, it doesn't matter to me anymore, but. Whenever there's a panel going on that you really want to go, and there's another panel that you want to go, but you can't be in two places at the same time, it happened um, that Saturday, because there was the Metal Jesus panel happening, and then there was the 8 Big Guys panel that started 30 minutes earlier. But in the end, I finally got to catch up on the last 15 minutes of Metal Jesus' panel with Reggie and John Riggs, John Hancock, Kelsey and Kinsey and I finally got to meet Kelsey and Cody from the Pink Gorilla and the Game Blitz podcast so shout out to them for all the awesome time and the awesome conversation we had so that's pretty cool so anyway what I got from 8-Bit Guy's uh, booth because he was sharing the same booth with Pat and Ian I finally got to meet Ian too so big shout out to him and Norm and Rue Rue from Clan of the Grey Wolf and he was a very nice guy to talk to. I really enjoyed his videos, 16-Bit uh, Gems, which I recommend you check it out. The guy that does most of the music for 8-Bit Guy's channel, he um, decided, he's told him, hey, why don't you give up my CD for free? It's nice to have free, um, free music, and I enjoyed Retro. I haven't listened to this yet, but I, did, I do know what, I do expect, I am expecting what I'm going to listen, so... I'm going to have a good time listening to this. And also, I bought a 8-Bit Guy soundtrack, which is autographed and signed by 8-Bit Guy himself. You see? In Silver Marker, Silver Sharpie. I really enjoyed having free like free music, and I actually bought this one. This um, soundtrack CD, of course. I will definitely listen to these two. Probably have the same track, but... Well, okay, it has some of Anders Jensen's track. Anders Jensen's probably has some of Anders Jensen's tracks and a bunch of other people like Philip Gross, Scott Lee, Alexander Brandon, even um David even David even 8 Big Guy himself rec recreated some uh, music from lots of DOS games that I love. Uh especially the Ultima 6 remake which I can play a little better, I can play a bit more accurately, not to be like oh I'm better than this, but I can play accurately with an actual plugin, a DX7 plugin, basically. But it will, it, it doesn't matter. Everyone has their own taste. And to finish it off, I got a shirt. I also bought a green shirt from a big guy himself. Size does matter, and it has the five and a quarter inch and the three and a half inch floppy disks. I have no, I have no way of running five and a quarter inch. I have no way of running these anymore. I can only run these on a on a freaking USB drive. And his panel, by the way, actually talks about him showcasing a game that he's developing currently, which is on the final stages of production. It's basically StarCraft, but for the Commodore 64. And I'm really hoping to play that someday when it comes out. But he said he is working on a possibly would work on a DOS port, which I will then go ahead and play it. I'm really looking forward to his game called Planet X2, I think. Down that same booth, I got to speak with Norm, the gaming historian, again. This time, we didn't have much of a conversation, but we did. I did get to talk to him the most. I did get to talk to him the most, and it was really cool meeting these guys again. It was really cool seeing Pat, even though I didn't get to speak with him often. He was way too busy selling his book. And if he was selling more stuff other than his DVDs and his book, which I already have, 
then I would have started a more, I would have started a conversation. But anyway, I actually bought two games from Norm, which are Scooby-Doo Classic Creep Capers for the N64. There's a funny story behind this. I was going to pick up the gray cart variant of this, and then he's like, would you want the black cart variant for it? And I'm like, okay. So, yeah, because um, black carts are usually for horror games and like Turok and um, I think, Tur yeah, Turok 2 had that kind of vibe going on with this. Wrestling games, like the WWF games have this, I think. Uh, WrestleMania 2000 had this, I think. I had to look it up. And um, it's horror. It's horror comedy. So, yeah, it fits the, um, fits the description of the game. And another one I got is one of my favorite arcade games of all time, Burger Time. And, I mean, who doesn't love Burger Time? All you do is make burgers and... Other foods want to kill you because you just make burgers all day. That's pretty much it for Norm's table. But speaking of Scooby-Doo, this is from another table, by the way. I also got Scooby-Doo Mystery for the Super Nintendo. This was actually... Uh, I saw a fellow YouTuber named Ramen Wolf actually did a Let's Play on this. Um, a couple of... Several months ago, I think. So, big shout out to him for actually letting me find out about this game. So, I'm going to try it out and see for myself. Another person I did get to meet is also Chris Kohler. Actually, I've been following Chris Kohler's um, work since, I don't know, since the beginning of high school, actually. I actually discovered his video series called Game Life, which is by Wired, because he used to be working for Wired. Now he works for Kotaku, which is pretty cool. Of course, I love Astro Boy, and I finally got Astro Boy on the PlayStation 2. Now, Astro Boy... I don't have to explain it anymore. I love Astro Boy. I got the Famicom game. I've got the 2004 anime series. This is actually based on the 2004 version, which is pretty good. I enjoy Astro Boy for what it is. I love Astro Boy. What more can I say? And finally, I got I finally got a couple of repros of certain games that I really wanted to play that I never gotten the chance to play until now and forever possibly. And one of these games is actually Sweet Home on the Nintendo slash Famicom. Uh, I've seen v Pro Jared did a Let's Play on this game. I found out about the, the game and the movie about uh, several years ago. I did watch the movie. It's pretty good. Do you think I should do a review on that movie? I have to watch it again in order to review it and make a video on it on YouTube before I post it on the channel. And possibly review the game as well since... They go together hand in hand, obviously. Let me know, guys. What do you think? This is another repro game, and it is Holy Diver. I've been wanting to play this game ever since uh, John Riggs mentioned it at um, Metal Jesus' channel once. I think it was like the hidden gems for Famicom, I think. And it looks pretty interesting. I definitely want to play this one day. So stick around. I finally, When I said I finally got to meet Ian, him and his wife, Vani, were actually selling... Uh, these uh pins like these little pac-man pins right here like i don't know if you can see it right right here i have this i have this tied into my like i have this strapped onto my my badge because i don't want it to lose it so basically this is the pin and here's the pin that i got look check it out it's a flashing ghost it's a flashing ghost hey woo, woo, woo. it's the ghost where when you eat the power pellet and they turn blue and when it runs out, it, they turn, they flash from white and red to blue and white and all that. Like, they're almost going to turn to normal. Funny story about that one, too. He, um, I don't know, somehow, for some reason, I didn't care. They come in very different, like, shapes and colors and all that. It's basically all the possible sprites you could see on the Pac-Man game. I didn't care which one I got. I was like, eh, okay, $5, no problem. And you should have seen the look on his face, on their faces, everyone on the booth. Because supposedly, this is a rare one. If you ever seen the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, it's basically that situation where somehow I happen to win the golden ticket. And this is basically their reaction, basically their golden ticket, I don't know. At first I thought, well, it's just a pin, okay. So I rolled it on with it, I'm like, yay! Um, 
a pin that I don't know nothing about. <laughs> but in the end, it was really nice meeting Ian and all those other people in the booth. Rue and all those other people. Oh, he also sold me a little little uh, Pixel Sickle charm, which is, if you could see this on his uh, Twitter on his Twitter profile, this is basically the the grape popsicle that he puts on his as his profile picture. I don't know. It's really cute. I actually enjoy popsicles, but I can't. I'm a little sick right now. If you see the jump cuts because I am coughing, I don't want to disturb any of you guys. So here is a complete in box copy of Tron 2.0 Killer App. Now I have played Tron 2.0 on the PC. This is Probably like the game, the story takes place between the original Tron movie and Tron 2.0. Because I don't know if um, Jet Bradley, which is Alan Bradley's son in the Tron universe, is actually canon. Because Disney somehow, for some dumb reason, decided to not make any more Tron movies. And I love Tron. I'm a huge Tron fan, as you can obviously tell. So I, I'm going to play this game because I love Tron. So let's see how this one is. It has the um, two original arcade games, the Tron arcade game and the Discs of Tron game, which they actually have in the convention, which I finally got to play. And it, I can say I'm pretty good at it. I've gotten pretty good. Remember earlier in this video, I said I met Kelsey and Cody from Pink Gorilla. Well, Cody was actually running the booth right there, and I finally got to buy some stuff from their little store oh and you saw it it's the little mascot plush that you see here interesting because he looks like a hedgehog instead of a gorilla but it doesn't matter i like gorillas i like this kind of stuff it's pretty pretty fun to have you know he's a really um lovable mascot you might say and cody actually gave me actually cody's giving away these for free and it's like uh, this card game. And originally, here's a fun fact. Originally, before it was called Pink Gorilla, it was called Pink Godzilla. And I think Toho or whoever owns the rights to Godzilla is like, hey, it's nice that you're doing this, but stop or we'll sue you. I, the original owner before Kelsey and Cody own it now. And this is before Kelsey and Cody owns the company now, but it was owned by somebody else. So they changed the name from Pink Godzilla to Pink Gorilla. And I say it's a good choice because, I don't know, saying Pink Godzilla doesn't really add up. I really enjoy the sound of saying Pink Gorilla. You see? Pink Gorilla. It just rolls off the tongue. Well, they gave me that for free. And I also bought a just one thing from him that he was selling. Um, an empty box for Super Mario All-Stars on the Super Nintendo. Now, I already put in the game and the manual in, so now it's complete in box. So, thanks, man. And I hope to listen one of your podcasts again with Kelsey, because I've been really urging to listen to another topic that you guys uh, could talk about. I really enjoy your podcast, so I'm really enjoying... I'm really looking forward for a new episode. So, that is all for the pickups from Portland. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and be sure to... Don't forget to comment on... If you ever like my pickups and what you thought about it, and if you were at the show, what you think about it, I would love to hear from you. And don't forget, you can also check out my Portland travel blog, which is right here on this screen. Bearing that in mind, this is Caesar, aka The Rebel of Gaming, signing off, saying, Game on, rock on, and party on, dudes and dudettes. Have a good one.